today we are going to do an oil pastel workshop. So what you're going to need is a cup or a bowl or a plate, anything that's a circle. You could use something that's another shape as well. Your oil pastels, any oil pastels that you have. A pencil. Okay, now what we're gonna do, and you can do this on drawing paper, you can do this in your sketchbook. You don't wanna do it on really thin paper. Trace your shape. Now, could you use different bowls or cups so that you had different sized circles? Hmm, that could be interesting. You can. Can you use a different tool, such as a compass or a circle drawer? I have a circle drawer. You can. Some of you might have a circle drawer. Ooh, there's a little one. So if, with my circle drawer, if I put my pencil in a hole close to the center, I get a smaller circle. And if I put my pencil in a hole far away from the center, I get a bigger circle. All right, now I wanna make some of these going off the page. So that goes off the page. That goes off the page. Oh. Okay. There we go. Now I have so many different little sections and it's important that you have lots of sections. Now I might have too many sections, but you do want to have a lot of sections because you're going to be experimenting with different things in the different sections. One thing that you're going to do is you're going to take a crayon. I think I forgot to tell you, you're going to need a crayon. So you should have some crayons and I would use a dark colored crayon and color in, so this one's purple. I didn't even know what color this was when I grabbed it. It's purple. And color in one section. Should I tell you why right now or should I keep it a secret? I think if I were you, I would wanna know what's going on. So I'm gonna tell you. If you don't wanna hear it yet, mute it and you won't hear. So the reason that I'm coloring this is because we're gonna color over it with oil pastel and then we're gonna scratch back through it. And that is called scruffito, okay? Scruffito is when you scratch back through. It works really well if you're doing a light color on top of a dark color. If you are going to create a dark color on top, you want to use bright colors. So I'm going to take some of my bright colors. This is a glitter crayon. Ooh. Don't worry about making these sections perfect because you're going to be coloring over them with oil pastel. Okay, but you do want them to be solid. You don't want a lot of spaces. If you have spaces where there's no wax from the crayon, it's gonna be harder to scratch back through. Okay, there we go. You can even do white. I'm gonna do one whole section, white. Okay, now I'm just gonna have to remember, maybe I'll do this whole entire circle. Maybe I'll do all of these white, and then I'll be able to remember. This was where I put that wax. Okay, there we go. I'm gonna put my crayons away. I'm gonna get rid of that extra wax that's on the surface. It's 
blending. Look at that. You can blend crayon. Okay. Now, a lot of people don't realize you can blend crayon, but you really actually can. Let's start coloring. I am going to blend yellow and one other color. So pick a color that you want to blend and go for it. Now, remember, the lighter colors are going to be weaker. The darker colors are almost always going to be stronger. So think about that when you're doing your blending. I think I'm going to use a green. There's already a little green in here. And this is a little dirty. I could clean it with a Kleenex or I could just allow that contamination to kind of make it more interesting. Okay, now I don't want to have a division like that. I want to blend it. You can use the oil pastel itself to move the color, to blend it. You can also use a tool you can use your finger, you can use a Kleenex. Now, this is not working very well. Do you see what's happening? My oil pastels are old and they're a little dry. So this can sometimes happen where, oh, now it's working. What was happening is rather than blending, the yellow was kind of scraping the color off, okay? All right, so I have got a bit of a gradual blend. There we go. Now, do this in hmm, maybe five different sections. Blend two colors together to experiment and see what you got. So you're going to be experimenting and learning, but at the same time, you're going to be creating a really beautiful piece. Okay, I'm going to try this light pink. What should I blend it with? Hmm. How about orange? Do you think orange would be a good color to blend it with? They're not super different, are they? Because pink is what? Red and white, and orange is red and yellow. Okay, so I'm gonna go back and forth blending the color. There we go. Okay, so keep on going with that and experiment with blending different colors. One of my favorite things to do is to blend with white. I absolutely love blending with white, especially with oil pastels, but also with other medias. This looks purple. What's happening is there was a little bit of purple on the oil pastel, and it's blending itself. It's mixing. Oh, it's such a pretty color. Now, you know what? I might not even do much here because I really like this texture. I like this really pale purple color. So I'm gonna just do a little bit purple. Okay, so I'm changing my plan. It's okay to change your plan in the middle of an artwork if you see something happening that you like. That's it. I'm going to leave it like that. There's just a little bit of darker purple and then it blends in towards a lighter color. Okay, now another thing I want you to experiment with is stippling. Okay. So this is stippling. It's making little dots. Okay. So I'm doing something similar to this one, but I'm doing it in a different way. This is a different kind of blending. Maybe I'll add some white to this end. Maybe I'll add some blue 
over here. Okay, so this is called stippling. There's a famous painting in the Art Institute of Chicago called Afternoon on La Grande Jatte, or Afternoon in the Park. It's by Georges George Serrat. And it's all done in pointillism, which is little points of color, which is what this is, okay? Stippling, or pointillism. So you can do this in a couple different areas as well. Now, let's do something called scumbling. <clears throat> now, this is called scumbling. Scumbling is when you are just making marks by turning and twisting, almost letting the material get a little bit out of control, although not really. I am controlling it. Pick up a couple different colors and do some scumbling. I'm twisting it. See that interesting mark? Now, this is what I want you to do after you do the scumbling. I want you to think about what else you can do to create interesting marks. Now, you can go over it with another color and blend. Look at that. Or you can leave it. I'm gonna do half and half. Let's come over here with a light color. It's not covering very well. Your oil pastels are probably a different brand. You might have a different experience. But do you see how it's not covering very well? <clears throat> what I'm gonna do next, after I completely cover this, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and do it. Here's a gray. You can see, you can experiment with different colors and see which works best. Hmm. Maybe I'll put some more gray over on this end. Maybe I'll scumble it. I'll scumble it a little where they meet. I'm scumbling where they meet. Okay, I'm gonna add a little bit of white in here. Doesn't really show up. Okay, now I'm gonna take a pointy stick. You could take a toothpick, you could take a skewer if you have one in your kitchen, and you could take a pencil. I'm using a mechanical pencil with no lead out. And you can draw back in and what's gonna happen is wherever you have wax underneath, it's gonna just scrape off the top layer. Okay, you can do the same thing here, but you can do it with a darker color, such as black. A lot of times we do this with black. So I'm gonna color this entire circle with black. You wanna be careful about black because black can kind of contaminate everything. It's such a powerful color. Remember, as you go, you can always put a piece of paper underneath your hand so that you don't drag the colors or smear the colors inadvertently, accidentally, not on purpose. You don't want to inadvertently smear your colors. And I can draw into this. Ooh, look at that color underneath. Now, you could do some zen doodling here. You can just play like I'm doing. You can draw a line and then turn it and see if you see something. 
to put a pattern inside this section. Okay, and I can come back to this. What else could you do? Just experiment. Art is a lot like science. You can experiment with different materials and see what happens. Experiment. Do something different in every single one of your sections and see what happens. One thing I would like for you to do is really experiment with white. You can do some really fun things with white. My favorite color to blend with white with oil pastel is blue. If you just take a little bit of blue. Is this my white? Yep. And then you kind of stir it together. And I'm gonna move the color this way. Come on, color. Come this way. Come on. You have to treat it like a toddler. Come on, toddler. Do you have any toddler siblings? They don't always listen very easily. Okay, so I'm adding a little more. Come on. Come this way, Blue. Come on, Blue. Come on. Do you see how I'm pulling the color over? Should I do some more? Let's lay down some more color and pull the color this way. Come on, color. You can come. Come on. I'm going to put a little over here. Oh, that's a lot. Ooh, look at that beautiful color. What else should I add? Hmm. How about some green? Some green could be interesting. What about adding in some yellow? Oh, there's already some red. I got a bonus color that happens sometimes with oil pastels. So you can blend this together. Look at that. Now, you can scratch back through anything. It doesn't necessarily have to have the crayon underneath it to do graffito. Do you see that? But the crayon does provide a nice slick surface on the paper and it will allow a really nice clean scruffy dough. So experiment with using the crayon underneath. See what you think. One thing that you can do is you can just play. Just play in one section. Just grab any color Maybe don't even look at which color you're picking up. And just start blending and see what happens. You might come up with something that you wouldn't normally see if you're doing something kind of unintentionally. So I might not normally create something like this I did intentionally just pick up the white. So then you can start intentionally picking up things after a while because you sort of know what to predict might happen. I'm gonna lay down some white first and then I'm gonna randomly grab colors and make marks. Ooh, look at that. Get that color. It's so fun. Ooh, I don't like that color. What am I gonna do? When you mix a color that you don't like, what do you do? Do you just leave it there? Or do you try to change it? Should I add some red?
Oh, maybe I'll try to blend it towards the center. Oh, that's interesting. Now, if you have a triangle, you can try this trick. So what I did was I put a yellow line, a red line, and blue in the middle. I didn't put one on this side. There was already red there though. And then I took my white and I blended them together. And do you see what happened? You can try that if you have sort of a triangular section and you'd like to. As you're finishing up your piece, you can take a look at the whole composition. So you've been doing a lot of experimenting, you've been trying things out, but now you can think about, hmm, what color do I need in a certain place? So I feel like I need yellow here. So I can pull this all together by doing some outlining, or maybe I could blend the outlines even more. I could create it so there are no separations. So there's different ways you can choose to complete your piece. And that's up to you. So one thing you can do is you can outline in black. This is going to make it a lot stronger. You're going to see the original shapes. Do you like that? Is that what you want to do? What if you went with white? What if you outlined all of the different lines in white? What would happen? What about going over them with a sharp tool? or just a pencil, a graphite pencil. You can go in and you can draw back into this whole piece with a graphite pencil, creating scruffito. So remember, scruffito is when you scratch back through. Scruffito. So you could go back over all the borders and create scruffito lines. You can outline. You could write inside the sections. You could create poetry. You could use this as a background and do a collage on top of it. There are so many different ways that you can go with your artwork. You always have so many choices.